This video is brought to you by the wonderful members of my Patreon. Hey June Chasers, it's JC, and welcome to the fourth and final video in my series about how to take art commissions. So far, we've covered stuff like how to set prices, how to find clients, how to write policies and contracts, and how to manage your workload. And today, we're going to focus on sort of the interpersonal aspect of taking commissions. So setting boundaries with clients and dealing with issues that come up. A quick disclaimer, if you're a former client of mine and you're wondering, oh, am I, am I like a problem client? No, no, please don't worry. Um, one, I haven't had a, an issue with a client that's genuinely upset me in many years. And two, uh, you know, things do happen, right? Like miscommunication stuff and, and boundary issues. And that's normal. That's part of collaborating and working with someone. And, and that's not, that's not something that I like take personally or, you know, hold someone to like that. That's a two way street. It's part of the process. It's totally fine. And, uh, and, and three, if you are worried about something like that, chances are you're a very considerate person and you have nothing to worry about. So don't worry about it. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about boundaries. To be honest, like 99% of my commissions at this point go really smoothly. I don't have a lot of problems. In my experience, most of my issues in the past had come from either a miscommunication or just that both parties had different expectations. And a lot of that can be cleared up by setting policies early on, making those clear to the client. And so I've gotten a lot better at preventing those types of problems. I already went over how to write policies in a previous video. So if you haven't seen it, you can go check it out. There's links to all of them in the description. Uh, part two was the one that covered policies. So go check that out. Your policies kind of are your boundaries, right? It's, it's just you setting firm boundaries in a very clear way and communicating that to the client. Uh, and that helps you manage your time and your energy. It helps make sure everyone's on the same page. It helps the client manage their expectations. And that's all great. But sometimes even with clear written policies, you have to reinforce some of those boundaries or even create new ones. A mistake a lot of new artists make with commissions is feeling like you owe all of your time and energy to your clients. And yes, they're paying a lot of money and you should deliver their work well and on time. But one client can't monopolize all of your time. It's really hard to learn this lesson because you know, you're, you have so much gratitude and you want to show them how much you appreciate them for hiring you, but you can do that by delivering their work well and on time, not by compromising your mental health or overextending yourself. In part one of this series, I talk about how to calculate your prices based on the time you spend in a commission, including the time you spend going back and forth with clients. So if you estimate a half an hour of communication, don't let it turn into five. So whether a client is just very enthusiastic or maybe a tiny little bit entitled or bossy, you gotta set boundaries. Heck, you might even be friends with this person. All the more reason to set boundaries and separate the business side of things. That might mean only discussing commissions via email if that's your policy rather than texts or DMs. And it might also mean only answering those questions during business hours. That's actually part of the reason I require clients to email me. Uh, it's because it's very easy to see a notification on my phone and think, oh, I have a DM. I wonder what it is. And, and then, you know, I feel compelled to answer it right away. So even if it's 2 a.m. and I just got up to pee and I looked at my phone real quick and then I see, oh, OK, someone DM'd me. Well, that's not a time I really want to give to someone else, you know? So I don't want to answer that DM. But if I don't, I'm going to forget about it. And so then I, I feel like, oh, I guess I have to answer. And it's just so much easier to just get an email and check my email at certain times during the day than, than to kind of deal with that. So now if I get a DM about a commission, I will just say, hey, I can't take care of this right now, but can you shoot me an email so I don't forget this and I can check it out later? Thanks, smiley face. So they know that we're cool and I'm not mad or anything. <laughs> um, you know, because you don't have to be formal and stiff, like as per my policy vis-a-vis -vis correspondence, you know, just, just be clear and firm. I can't do this right now. Send me an email. Thanks. Done. Cool. 
Another boundary that comes up a lot for me at least is making exceptions on payment policy. So my policy is that I require payment upfront and sometimes people will ask for an exception to that. Can I, you know, pay you half now? And uh, honestly, I, I just stick to repeating my policy in that case. I say my policy is that I accept payment upfront. I understand why you'd be nervous, so I'd be happy to provide you with some references of other clients if you'd prefer. But I don't bend on that policy because I have that policy for a reason. I talked about that a bit in my last video, but generally all of my policies are because of experiences I've had. I've, I've set them based on that. And it can feel kind of awkward, but it's important to be firm in whatever your policies are. You made them for a reason, and you honestly don't owe anyone an explanation about that. Just be polite, but firm. Like, I'm sorry, but this is my policy. Another boundary, uh, you might also have to reiterate the subject matter that you won't draw. Uh, if someone asks you for something that you don't want to draw, you can just say, no, I'm not interested in building a portfolio with that kind of work. It, and if they persist, you can point them to an artist that you think might be a better fit who does do that kind of work. Because the thing is, you know, even if the subject matter isn't something that I'm uncomfortable drawing, like not safe for work content, um, but you know, it's boring to me, <laughs> I don't want to do it. I don't want to take work, uh, you know, where I'm drawing, I don't know, tanks and like military stuff. Like that's not my thing. That's cool if it is your thing, but I don't want to take work of that kind of stuff that bores me and then have that in my portfolio because then I'm gonna keep attracting that kind of work and those gigs. And you know, you end up with a whole portfolio of stuff you're not that interested in drawing. So I, I think that it's a good idea to say, no, 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 that's not really my jam. I've had people insist, oh, I think you could handle it. And it's like, that's fine. It's not what I want to draw. And that there's nothing wrong with saying that. There's also nothing wrong with taking work that you're not interested in to, to pay the bills. I'm not saying that, but just keep in mind that you know, your portfolio attracts more work like that. So it's better to build a portfolio of work that you're interested in doing if possible. And if you do take not safe for work commissions, by the way, make sure your clients know what your boundaries are in terms of what you're willing to discuss. Just because you're drawing sexual content, that doesn't mean you're okay with someone sending you graphic photographs or going into detail about their personal turn-ons. Those conversations should stay professional and about the commission itself and you know if it deviates from that in any way that you're uncomfortable with you're allowed to shut it down and say hey you know what i'd rather not discuss this topic at length with you let's please stay professional and about the artwork you know and if they give you a hard time beyond that you have the right to cancel a commission and give them a refund if it's not worth it to you do that uh, you're not obligated to do business with someone that makes you uncomfortable or crosses your personal boundaries All right, so we covered boundaries. Now let's talk about how to deal with some issues that might come up during a commission. So like I said, 99% of commissions go really smoothly when you have policies in place and your boundaries are established, but things can still go wrong and it can be kind of scary to navigate those situations. You can't predict every situation, unfortunately, but I'm gonna cover a few things that may come up and how to handle them professionally. The first being someone doesn't pay you. Oof. Uh, so honestly, this is really the reason that a lot of artists require payment up front or at least a partial payment. It's unfortunately more common than it should be. Uh, and if you don't have a contract, there's not really a lot you can do here. Uh, even if you do have a contract, if the commission was less than a few hundred dollars, it might not be worth going to court or hiring a lawyer over. There might not be anything you can do. I really, really hate to say this, but you might have to take your lumps on this one. In my experience, you will make yourself sick chasing someone down for money. It, ultimately, it might not be worth the emotional investment and the time you put into chasing down the money. I think the best thing you could do is send a few follow-up invoices and move on. I think it hurts to hear that, but sometimes it's probably for the best to just kind of let it go. And I'm not even saying that you can't call the person out publicly, but make sure that if you go that route that you've tried every other option, you've given them plenty of chances to respond, and that no matter what, you stay professional and calm. Like, save the salty rants for your friends in private. Publicly, you have to be very cool and collected because the last thing you wanna do is 
be seen as someone who's difficult to work with or who's unprofessional. And regardless of the facts, if you're seen screaming and swearing and, you know, <laughs> freaking out over a non-payment, there might be people who think you're in the wrong and, you know, the client's going to do everything they can to make it seem that way. Like, oh, you know, I just didn't get their email. So it's really important that you just stay calm. And it might not be that effective if the person doesn't really have a big reputation. Uh, or it could backfire if they have a really huge fan base who's gonna take their side no matter what. So be careful. And please, if you have any kind of a following, please be clear that you don't condone threatening people or risking their safety. Uh, like, you're not the mafia. No one should be making threats over money, you know? So, so just try to be responsible if you're gonna go the public call-out route. It's very dicey. It really sucks to be in that situation. It really does. It makes you feel powerless but try to learn from it and move on with grace and dignity. The next issue that might come up is that no matter what, you just cannot make a client happy. You send them revision after revision and they just don't like anything. And you both hit a wall of frustration and finally the client requests a refund. And it's tricky because I've heard of clients who gained a reputation for doing this as a tactic to get free or cheap art. Um, because they actually do like the work or they will use it, but they claim they don't so they can get a refund or a partial refund. And it's really grimy. It's really, really grimy. I can't believe people do that, but I can, but ugh. you know, and I think it works because it's really easy to exploit an artist's insecurity. You know, we all feel insecure about our work. And so someone being like, you're just not that good. This isn't that good. It gets to us. It's, it, it, it's an effective tactic because of that unfortunately you know and i think this is a tough call because i think if you really are putting in your absolute best effort and you know you're making all the changes they request and they don't like it i think that's when you point to your terms of service uh, my policy is i offer three rounds of revisions and then anything else after that i charge more money for so you know if someone had a minor change at the end uh it doesn't require that i draw redraw the whole thing uh, a lot of times i'll, I'll accommodate it with no extra charge, even if, you know, they kind of went over the the policy a little bit, you know, because it's it's in there to protect me from, from that extreme example of someone who's just going to endlessly make me redo it uh, or, or try to, you know, demand a refund. So, uh, you know, my policies a lot of times on paper seem maybe stricter than they are in practice, and that's why. But I do purposely word my policies to discourage people from asking for major requests at the end or trying to ask for a refund at the end because i understand that people do that to to exploit artists and and so i try to protect myself from it with having clear like nope we're not doing that this is how it works kind of policies and uh and my refund policy also states that you can only request a partial refund during the sketch phase and after that i don't do refunds because i've put the work in you know, even even though I want the client to be 100% happy, I also need to get paid for my time. And, you know, that's fair. I think ultimately, you know, if the client thinks that I failed to meet expectations, well, I have to wonder why they hired me in the first place, right? Like, if they saw my portfolio and they knew what I was capable of and they agreed to hire me and they agreed to my terms and my refund policies and my revision policies, then, you know, I feel like to a degree, then I'm not sure what they were expecting. I feel like if you have firm policies on those things, you're better equipped to not let a client guilt you into giving them free work. And ultimately, I think if you're putting in your best effort, you're entitled to get paid for your time, even if the client isn't 100% happy. I'd insist on offering changes rather than a full refund and cancellation. Uh, and, and most clients who are acting in good faith would much rather you fix something than just cancel altogether. So I think someone rushing to cancel and get a refund would be a red flag to me. And in any of these situations, if someone seems rude or angry, don't panic. Take a breath, walk away, call a friend. Just don't answer immediately when you're upset. Just stay calm and professional. If they're a little short with you, try to ignore it. Uh, you might not be reading their tone properly. 
Uh, they might be stressed out over a mistake or miscommunication. Most of the time, those things kind of resolve themselves and there's not really a reason to get all worked up. If it just comes off as a little rude, like don't sweat it. it it's probably gonna blow over. But if someone's using slurs or insults or abusive language, you don't have to tolerate that. If you haven't started the work at all, just give them a refund and block them. Even if they're upset for a valid reason, it doesn't matter. It doesn't justify abusive language. That's when you say, you know, I understand you're upset, but I can't move forward if you're gonna speak to me this way and use abusive language. And if they don't stop doing it, just, I would deliver what I already did for them and then point them to my terms of service and block them. I've never had this happen luckily, but you know, you hear stories, unfortunately. And last, but certainly not least, what do you do if you made a mistake or missed a deadline? Well, the number one thing is communication. If you made a mistake, own it, claim it, take responsibility for it, and more importantly, explain what you intend to do to fix it. In terms of deadlines, it's really important to get ahead of this before it's a problem. Uh, you know, right off the bat, I try to be clear about what kind of turnaround time the client should expect. Uh, so if I say I'll send them a sketch sometime next week, but for some reason I'm behind and I'm like, oh, I'm not going to do it within a week, I'll just shoot them a quick message. So, you know, hey, I'm running a bit behind schedule, just so you know, I wanted to give you a heads up. Uh, and uh, your sketch might take a few more days. Sorry about that. Thank you. That's it. That's all you got to do. Uh, most people are pretty cool with that. Uh, I think the worst thing you can do is say nothing. Most of the time, unless there's like a hard deadline, like an event that the work has to be done for, people are pretty understanding as long as you keep in touch. So, and if someone shoots you a message saying like, hey, just checking in, haven't heard for a while, like, please don't panic. I know that that gives me anxiety where I'm like, oh, I haven't reached out to them quick enough. But I realize a lot of times people will do that even though I'm still within the time that I said I would get back to them or, you know, it makes you kind of get nervous, but but the worst thing you could do is like shut down and ignore that email. Even if you're like in a depression spiral, pull it all together and just shoot them a message. It's like, hey, I'm a little behind schedule, but I'll be in touch, you know, soon, within a week, you know, like give them something. That is better than ignoring it. Even if you're late, even if you're past when you said you would reach out, just, just make sure you just really quick email. It's, it's not a big deal. It feels like a lot, I promise you, a quick, two sentence email is gonna make everything much better. And going back to that hard deadline thing, right? Like there's a birthday or an anniversary or something and the client needs it by a certain date. My advice is don't miss that. Make that a priority. Put their commission above everybody else's, you know, or don't take the work in the first place if you don't think you could do it. But let's say it's too late for that and you don't have a time machine to go back in time and tell yourself to pick a less stressful career path. What do you do? Well, it depends. Uh, sometimes the person might still want it. Like if it was for a gift, they, they might be fine with giving it a little bit late, but sometimes they needed it for an event and without it, it's pointless. So, you know, talk to them, reach out. If you don't think you're gonna make your deadline and you still have a little bit of time, reach out and let them know. Maybe they can find someone else. You can give them a refund before it's really a problem for them. They're not gonna like it, but it's it's better than like completely screwing them over. But you know, if you've missed it, I would say apologize. Uh, if it's a gift and they can still give it to the person late, maybe offer them a, a partial refund. But if it was for an event that they missed, you might have to give them a full refund. I, I, it's up to you, but I, I think in this case, it's a huge mistake and your reputation is, is kind of worth saving. It sucks. It's a hard lesson to learn. It really is. I'm sorry. I think the important takeaway is do not take on more than you can handle. Have a system for managing your commissions and be clear about everyone's expectations. If you can't make hard deadlines, just say so. Like, oh, you know, my cue is nuts. I, there's no way. Uh, let people know ahead of time. Don't, don't, don't give them the impression that you can do it if you can't. And do not learn this lesson the hard way. It sucks, you know. And of course, things come up that are out of your control. Sometimes it happens. I think just be upfront and honest with your clients. Reach out as soon as you can. You know, if you hurt yourself and you can't draw for a few weeks, shoot your clients a quick message. 99% of the time, if you communicate and you let people know, give them a heads up, they're pretty understanding. Don't be intimidated and avoid them. That's only gonna make it worse. Well, honestly, when I'm scared of sending out an email like that, I just say, hey, I'm running a little bit behind. I should have an update soon, thanks. And that's it. And I close my email and I don't look at it again until my anxiety chills out or I have an update for them. 
because like I said, most of the time people are fine with that. I promise you that learning to get more comfortable with the, hey, I'm running behind email is so much better than the second or third, hey, I'm just checking in email that your client sends. Like those are worse. So it, it, just, just please like copy and paste it. Hey, I'm running behind. I'll be in touch soon. Thanks. Put it in a file if you have to, so you don't have to like type it yourself. Just make it as easy as possible. Cause I know when depression sets in, life gets really hard. And when you're like overwhelmed and behind, that's when the depression, like people just want to know what's up. That's it. They just want to know you didn't forget about them, that you're not scamming them. That's it. That's all they want. You just gotta, just a quick email. That's all you gotta do. <laughs> I say this with all the love in my heart because I've been that scared person of like, oh God, they sent me an email and I'm behind and what do I do? Just tell them, just admit you're human. You, you goofed. It's okay. It happens. It happens. I think my experience working in like professional, like office settings with other people and having gotten so many of those, like, oh, hey, by the way, I thought I was going to get this today, but it's going to be tomorrow. Realizing the, the amount of times that happens in a professional setting made me feel way less insecure about when it happens to me. So no one needs to know that you weren't busy with 500 commissions and that it was just like, I don't know, I got kind of sad and I just binged Netflix today. No one needs to know why. No one needs to know why you're behind. Just, just let them know that you are and that you didn't forget. I feel like I just gave everyone like such an insight into my life. Anyway, I really hope that these videos have been helpful to you. If you have any questions about commissions, please let me know. I may do a follow-up in the future, um, but best of luck, you got this. If you've had any difficult situations doing commissions, please share in the comments. Let us know what the issue was, how you resolved it, and what you learned. And let's keep it professional. Thank you. <laughs> Until next time, chase your dreams and that bread. Peace. Hey, have you um, become a patron of the one and only JCF Chase? Not only will they invite you on a, a one-way trip to um, Sega's new theme park, Sonic Land. Uh, they uh, will also, uh, they'll, they'll, they'll draw you naked. You don't need to send them a picture, they just know. Don't believe me? That's fine. You just gotta, you gotta give, you know, at least a dollar a month to their Patreon. And they'll know. They just know. Become a patron today. Okay?